Hey there! Today we're doing something a little different. We are rebuilding my main production PC, and we're doing it live over on twitch.tv slash eposvox. And by the time you watch this video, it will have already been done, but this is my first time, well, my first time in like two years doing a PC building stream, and my first time doing it for my main production PC, where, you know, there's a little bit more stress attached and things like that. Uh, my, it's my Trunks PC that was originally purple and green themed, and it's been serving me quite well with my Intel Core i9-7980XE, things like that. However, I've run into some specific bottlenecks I wanted to address, as well as the fact that it's in a tiny case with terrible airflow, and it's really loud, and I want to keep it cooler, I want to keep it quieter, and I want to do it right for V2 for using it through 2019. I've been waiting a few months to be able to do this project, so... We're going to include some bits of the live stream, some bits of my thoughts, as well as some thoughts on over a year with the i9-7980XE at this point, and see how it goes. So, yeah. So the goal with today's project was threefold. I wanted to make my computer quieter because I was using a very loud case with a lot of fans. It was really obnoxious to deal with, especially after I had to move it to my desk. I wanted to address some of the bottlenecks and some of the improvements that I wanted to make with regards to performance and memory and things like that. I've been talking about RAM limitations that I've run into and things like that recently. And I wanted to make it cooler and ideally improve the overclock a little bit on my i9. For this, we swapped over to the Be Quiet Dark Base 900 case. It's orange and black themed, which isn't my favorite theme, but I'll deal with it. My core specs all stayed the same for the most part. So on the Asus Workstation Sage X299 motherboard, my Intel Core i9-7980XE, which was provided by Intel a couple years ago. I've got my GTX 1080 Ti graphics card, and then I've got the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K, Elgato 4K 60 Pro, and Blackmagic Decklink Mini Recorder 4K capture cards. My Mellanox ConnectX 2 uh, 10 gig SFP Plus network card. And then I've got a Sonnet Allegro USB 3.1 expansion card. But we had two contributions from companies to help sponsor this build, which made a lot of a difference for me addressing some of those bottlenecks that I was talking about. Uh, Crucial sent over a 100, well, two 64 gig kits of memory uh, that runs at 3200 megahertz, which is awesome for a total of 128 gigs of RAM. I've posted on Twitter a lot that I've been hitting the wall of what 64 gigs of RAM can actually do for me. So this will help alleviate some of that with regards to my video editing in Premiere Pro, After Effects, and DaVinci Resolve, as I've had a lot of issues where I'm starting to use up all of my memory for some of my big 4K60 projects and things like that. And Western Digital, WD sent over one of their new WD Black NVMe M.2 solid state drives. And this one is a new one. It's the SN750, I believe. It is blazing fast. I actually did a sponsored video for one of their original WD Black NVMe SSD that I use as my main boot drive in this machine. I did that sponsored video a couple years ago now. It was at my it was right when I just moved to my second apartment. And they now have this one, which is blazing fast. I can even with how I have it set up weird, which we'll address in the minute in a minute. I'm getting over three gigabytes per second read speeds from it and over two gigabyte per second write speeds to it, which is insane. And it has a nice clean black PCB, whereas their older one had the standard blue PCB or whatever. So it looks really cool. It's really nice. That memory kit looks pretty cool in the rig as well and helps because I do a lot of crazy intense high bitrate recording straight to ProRes or to Blackmagic's crazy one gigabyte per second uh, data rates for some of their footage and I need blazing fast SSDs, and I just needed more NVMe drives in general. So I also bought an Intel 660p NVMe drive just as an extra scratch and cache drive, which will improve my video editing performance and latency and things like that. So for the most part, thanks to the contributions from Crucial and WD and building out in this new case that I picked up on a Cyber Monday deal, I've got a nice silence optimized case that has better airflow. It's a lot bigger, but that means it's a lot roomier to build because I have a motherboard that's basically EATX sized, which means that the previous build was super cramped and I had a lot of trouble fitting everything in there. So I've got a lot more room. I've 
built it nice and quiet and I'm addressing performance concerns. I have more memory. I have four NVMe drives because I used these StarTech U.2 to M.2 drive sleds, which allow me, they're like two and a half inch drive sleds for the M.2 SSDs. And then I use a U.2 to M.2 or to SATA, or well, it's a U.2 breakout cable that runs to these sleds because my motherboard has two U.2 ports, which are still PCIe based, you know, data transfer. And so now instead of just the two onboard M.2 slots, I have four. And that WD Black, I was really worried about limiting its insane performance with this setup and going from U.2 to that M.2 sled, I'm still getting those speeds I was talking about where it's over three gigabytes per second read, two gigabyte per second write, insane. So that doesn't limit performance whatsoever. One issue that I did run into is I modded my previous case, the Fantex Enthu Pro M, which was a great case if you want a tempered glass RGB YouTuber build, which is what I was going for. I've never really done a build like that. I've always done in these giant monolithic silence cases like I'm going back to, and I wanted to try my hand at doing the YouTuber RGB build. It was a great case for that, but doesn't meet my needs of what I actually wanted from you know this project and or this build for my workstation. And so I actually modded the front panel for it because my motherboards have all had USB 3.1 type C headers on them. I actually modded it to add a type C port in the front. This case doesn't have it. I didn't feel like doing that again, but my motherboard only has one USB header at all. It has a singular USB 3.0 header that I actually broke the pin off of when I first installed the motherboard. Thankfully, Wendell over at Level 1 Techs was a god and helped fix that for me when I was over there a couple months ago. And so I have my USB 3 header running to the front panel ports, but the front panel also has USB 2.0, which my motherboard doesn't have. So I took a ridiculous idea that I had zero expectation that would work. I took a USB-C 3.1C header to USB 3 header adapter and Daisy changed it, chained it with a USB 3 header to USB 2 header adapter and connected the front panel header into that. So two different adapter conversions. And I haven't done extensive testing of like throughput, throughput and things like that, but I have plugged in some flash drives and they all seem to work fine. So that crazy conversion down to USB 2 worked out in my favor. So now I have more front panel USB ports as well. Overall, the stream went well. We chatted for like five hours. It took a ridiculously long time. I had to dust out the old case and I was really chatty and I took my time with it and things like that. We hooked up the my, my i9-7980XE to the Noctua NH-D15S, which is you know, one of the, pretty much the best air cooler you can get, the D15S. The D15S is slightly tweaked a little bit so that it doesn't block my top GPU slot because my motherboard has so many PCIe slots. They get right up, up against the cooler. And that worked out and got everything set up. Stream went well. Then I moved it over to my main desk, started running my FFmpeg tests, which FFmpeg video encoding uses the AVX 512 instruction set, which is incredibly intense on processors and does more like stress testing to a CPU than Intel's own burn test. And or the, as I don't know if that's officially Intel, but then the Intel burn tests that are used for a lot of benchmarks and my processor was jumping up to TJ Maxx 105 Celsius temperature. So we got it quieter, we addressed bottlenecks, but it's not cooler and I'm not getting a better overclock out of it. It's been a little while troubleshooting things like that, even went to the extent of reseeding my cooler and we're not really getting much better results. The only way that I can keep my processor cool is turning down the overclock by a mere 300 megahertz. So I was targeting a 3.9 gigahertz overclock and instead I'm now running at a 3.6 gigahertz overclock and that mere 300 megahertz was enough to make the difference between running at 105 C on some cores, completely, you know, overheating and thermal throttling. I've never seen this P this CPU thermal throttle other than in this specific test, all the way down to like the max temperature I hit was 85, 86 C running the exact same encoding test, 300 megahertz. And we tried under volting, we tried different things. This was the only thing that worked for now. And this is an all core overclock. So at some point I can take the time to figure out which cores I can overclock and which cores I shouldn't and things like that. But the Silicon Lottery is a an, an, an evil mistress, a torturous mistress. And I'm pretty sure I just kind of got a turd because I've, if, if you remember about a year ago, I put out a video about me trying to swap coolers to cool this i9 
and ended up with work, worse results. And I've kind of done the same thing again, except for that time, I basically read one review and was like, this is probably what I need and jumped in. Whereas with this cooler, not only do I have years of experience with the Noctua D15 and D14, knowing that it cools the ridiculously high TDP processors that I've had, like my FX9590, but I've also read every cooler benchmark and comparison that I could, specifically for this CPU, where people are getting the i9-7980XE up to 4.4 gigahertz, with this exact same cooler, and it beats out just about every other water cooler. Other than custom loop, of course, and I'm not doing a custom loop in this machine. And so I made a decision based on every available piece of information saying this was the right call, and it still didn't work out. And I really think my processor is just deterred. So I've kind of hit a wall in terms of how far I can push this thing and what I can do with it to keep it cool. So for now it's cool, it will work, it's fine, it's stable, but the next step is ideally a week or so after recording this, I'm going back to level one headquarters with Wendell. He apparently has some d stuff, so I'm not comfortable liquid meddling the CPU, especially since uh, that's, again, the, the, the focus that I make with my workstation computer is that it needs to be stable, it needs to be low maintenance, it needs to just be set it and forget it. And everything I read about liquid metal is you gotta watch out for it moving and shifting and you gotta check on it and things like that. I'm not doing that. So even if it only gets me a few Celsius, I am just swapping out the paste underneath the IHS and just delitting it. And I think we're going to lap the CPU heatsink, the in integrated heat spreader, the IHS, because when we were trying to troubleshoot this, I ended up doing a secondary live stream just to some people in my Discord trying to like troubleshoot what was going on as far as cooling and things like that. My CPU is very clearly concave, I believe is the right one. It is very high in the middle and completely not high on the edges. And so the cores along the edges of the IHS are what are heating up the most and it's not applying even pressure. I reseeded it, I tried a couple different things. It is the IHS itself that is not even. So I'm gonna go, we're going to, we're going to lap it first, make sure everything's cool with that. Lap it, try to get it as even and smooth as possible. And then from there, we will delit it a little bit, or not a little bit, but you know, delit it try to get that little extra bit of performance, and then whatever we end up with, I will have to settle with, and then from there I can go through and experiment with overclocking specific cores and finding which ones I need to not overclock as much and yada yada, and maybe change specifically the AVX 512 overclocked as well. So this is part one of what was supposed to be a fairly easy upgrade again. I'm fairly happy with the build overall. The case is great. The parts are great so much. So many thanks to Crucial for the memory kit and WD for the SSD, and super shout out to Mr. Goodhand and Hunter in our Discord server, who helped out in the original stream, helped out privately later for me on Discord. We spent basically 12 hours yesterday just doing all of this working on my computer, and they were huge helps. Thank you so much. I will have links to their relevant stuff if required in the, or requested in the description below. This is part one. The rig is great. I haven't sticker bombed it yet. I'm gonna wait until I take it apart again and we do the lapping and things like that, but the final product will be a pretty, pretty freaking beastly build. I have like three SATA SSDs, four NVMe SSDs, an eight terabyte WD red hard drive in this. We've got 10 gigabit networking, a beastly USB expansion card I still need to finish my video on, GTX 1080 Ti, 128 gigs of RAM, 18 cores, 36 threads. This is my main workstation PC that I do my 4K, 60, 4K, sometimes 8K video production on and does all of my live streaming for my gaming PC on X264 at slow with some of the best quality Apex Legends streams people have ever seen on Twitch. So turning out pretty cool. Be Quiet Case is pretty cool as well. That's going to be it for me for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more tech education. Go check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash eposfox. We will be doing more PC building live streams. Maybe even the week that you're seeing this video, I'm doing an 80s themed streaming rig. And I'll see you in the next video.